Hello everybody, and my apologies for not uploading this morning. It was, let's just say, a interesting start to the day that wound up with me just going, eh, I just need to collapse. Hmm. Oh, pardon me. So today, looks like we, looks like I've got, got a build request. So let's quick go over it. Now, it was given to me as a picture, so I've got much of the start down, but looks like it's the Tempo Robe, then the Arcana are Stone Shot, Bubble Blast, Earthen Aegis, and Homing Flares, starting with the Surefire Rocket. If there's a theme to this build, I don't 100% know what it is. It just looked like this was, the, like the idea behind this was, let's fire Homing Flares from behind shields. And if that's the case, then, hey, four stars, you managed to get that much done. So, oh, oh that's where I wanted to start. Curse me! Alright. Mostly, I just want to get you out of the way so we can move on to greener pastures. There we go. So, with things the way they are... It's going to become very easy to hide behind the shields and let the homing players do what they're supposed to do. And I guess we'll just kind of see how that works out. Alright, so I'm going to tell you right now, what we really need to get this build going is probably going to be some some more combat ready arcana. And maybe like a relic or two that are that's going to boost our damage. Hello sir. Okay, that could be a good sign or just nothing depending on what else we find. So admittedly, it's going to become very easy to just kind of rely upon the holding flares since they're kind of taking care of most of the work for me. So at the moment, it looks like the crux of the build is is keep enemies away from you and buy time to wait out the cooldown of holding flares. What's funny about this is that the is that the person who gave me the build, who I'll just say is XR Freedom. Thank you for the build, by the way. However much I may be kind of you know pissing about about it, it is nice to get to get recommendations and play, try out other play styles. Okay, so Stygian Turtle Shell is about the best thing he has, but I'm gonna wait and see what we can find at Iris's shop before I purchase anything. Now, most important thing to find would be the upgrade for Stone Shots. That I will definitely say is priority number one as far as. as far as our honor is concerned. Priority number two would would definitely be huh. Priority number two would be the idea that at time of recording it's 1 a.m. and I'm a very sleepy boy. Not so sleepy that I can't do this run. Plus I've still gotta do some mining runs in Monster Hunter to make up for some of the money that I'm spending making rampage weapons. Alright, so indeed, we've got the Stone Shot basic, thank goodness. Everything else is kind of hidden. Alright, 
Alright, so I think we've got one more combat room before the end. And I will go ahead and do it because every little bit of gold helps. If you're a controller player like I am, don't be afraid to every now and again switch to the stick to get to get a greater aim. Okay, so part of the problem I'm seeing is that if I do buy an Arcana and go take it to Nocturne, the problem is he's going to just take the Earth and Aegis. And since that's a part of the build that I was given, I'm pretty sure that would... Oh, wait. I'm going to just take this to him. I'm done. And I'll grab that as well. Alright, token of luck given. Alright, sir, give me something good. What are you willing to share with me? I see two things here I really like. Hmm. I think even though... Even though I know Zeal is opponent number two, I think I'm still going to take the, take the Tracer Barrage because I feel it's just going to do a greater job of both control and damage. There we go. Now, I, I've mentioned many times that I have a bit of a bias towards towards Tracer Barrage, but hopefully after enough of, after watching enough of my runs you can understand why. Well, if I were speed running, that would be beautiful. Now, what you might be now another thing you might have noticed is that I am kind of using using the shields a little aggressively. Because one of the things that Earth and Aegis is really good at is covering your butt while you're okay. So it's going to be a trick figuring out how to break Mr. Pinata here. did it. There we go. See, just a little bit of aggression with the shields and you're all set. Oh, I am so tempted to take that. Now, sim in, simply in the vein of keeping the, of keeping the run as similar as XR Freedom designed it, I am not going to take it. Believe me when I say that. If I wasn't doing this as like a part of, as like a, it were a challenge run, then yeah, I would be all over that. And again, I don't think Stone Shot is bad by any means, but oh, the the air spinner is just so much. There we go. 
Um, of everything here, honestly, there isn't a whole lot here that's really catching my attention aside from the unicorn tail. But Dark Sage, the unicorn tail doesn't do anything. Um, hello? It doesn't do anything. First of all, it's the second half of the unicorn outfit. Second of all, even without it, it makes it friggin' fabulous. Yeah, I am not a fan of the Earth-based summoners. Okay, so some sort of DPS improvement would, would be nice. In lieu of that... Okay, that is a beautiful bit of... beautiful bit of rain damage. I am plenty happy to take it. But we could still use some offensive relics, so I'm going to be keeping my eye out for things like well, obviously Amulet of Sundering, Singing Bowl... Something to help improve our overall DPS would be nice. But I'm not gonna... I'm certainly not turning my nose up at Aqua Breaker. Aqua Breaker is a beast. I mean, that would be like, you know, if you were if you were Samus and you're like, who needs to pick up the charge beam? Who do you think I am? And on that note, let's talk about let's talk about Metroid, more specifically Metroid Dread, and why that and why that's such a big announcement. So, as as many of you may know, the Metroid series has been going strong for quite a while, or at least it had. Let's just say sometimes trying to take something in a new direction doesn't always work out. And in the case of Metroid, what ended up not working out... I am going to take this, by the way, and you can't stop me. What ended up not working out was Metroid Other M. This was developed by the team... by Well, not the team, but... It was developed by Team Ninja, who are known for Dead or Alive and the newer Ninja Gaiden series. But that that begs the question of what of what of what else are they known for? Some of you may already know the answer to this question. It's a little something known as Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Which, yeah, I know that kind of goes into territory when I said that they that they did the Dead or Alive series. Just some people I don't think 100% internalize that. What I'm getting at is that they don't exactly have the greatest track record with games with female leads. And yeah, it turns out that they didn't really know what to do with Samus other than make her not quite the bounty hunter that we all expected. I don't really have anything to do with it. I mean, I'll take it, but I'm not going to use it. Case in point, she went from being a strong, independent bounty hunter, where, who the, what is that? Graduation cap? Yay, I actually don't know. But just, 
again, to kind of preface this and just kind of bring it on home, much of... Much of what the militaristic federation in, Metroid, in the Metroid games is there for is to show the strength of your enemy. It's the same reason why the Colonial Marines existed in Aliens. Not because they were supposed to be really awesome characters, oh my god, look at how cool these guys are, you know. But it was more so to show that before the, before the Xenomorphs, the Colonial Marines were still... Like, they had no idea what they were getting themselves into. And that's kind of what the that's kind of the role the Federation has in the Metroid series. Like, yeah, they're all militaristic and it's, they have weapons, but at the end of the day, Samus is the one who has the knowledge and know-how to fight these things. So to take Metroid Other M and not necessarily not necessarily center it around the Federation. But to make them more of a driving force than Samus and, you know, her thing, that didn't prove to go over well, especially when they kind of, for lack of a better word, neutered Samus's personality. Which, it's fair to argue that Samus didn't have much of a personality in the earlier games. I am completely receptive to that particular point of view. I actually would be more or less in agreement with this. She, unfortunately, is kind of a blank slate. But there are plenty of things that we do know about her. Um, dodge chance. Attacks on council members are more punishing, but enemies will slap me a little bit harder. So I think right now it's between that, or if I happen to find the Wanderer's Mechanism, I'll take the Volatile Gemstone. So it seemed like a good idea to give Samus a voice and actually hear from her, but the way that they implemented it, the way that they wrote the story, like it was very clear that that Team Ninja game is about as, about as many fucks about Samus as I knew about Russell's Wars. Oh, I made a stupid. So she ended up coming off as almost secondary to a Federation character that, honestly, none of us knew anything about, and didn't want to know anything about. Now, is it that character's fault that Samus was essentially a wet noodle? I would go so far as to say no, not really. Alright, so... Eh, it's a maybe. Let's be fair, that is kind of the bottom of the, bottom of the priority scale right now, because that, because that particular arcana is good at controlling space, but it's nothing you're going out of your way to to use, like, seriously as an attack. It's just a little too random. So, I think, unfortunately, I don't, I'm not going to have the means to take Etra with me. I am going to take the memory chain mail. So now we need to be a bit more careful about about the damage that we take. Because now we're going to be taking a bit more damage. But increased critical hit rate will certainly be helpful. Okay. 
think we'll be all right for right now. We've got a couple of good defensive relics. We just need to be a bit more careful and make liberal use of the earthen objects. So along with the graduation cap, something like Jade's, Jade's chakra, ne chakra necklace or the or the jewelry box would be real nice halves right about now. Mostly because that'll help kind of pull back some of the extra damage I'm taking from the power Namaskar. So just a quick question for XR Freedom before I go too much further. Why... Why Bubble Blast? Like, is that something that you chose, that you took as just kind of a personal pet pick, just because it's something that you know how to use? Or was it something that was specifically designed to, like, act as a challenge? Like, I'm curious, because it just seems like there are so many better dash options. with Metroid Other M, let me know what you think. Like, do you think that Adam Malkovich just kind of wrecked the game, or do you think that there were definitely other problems that created issues with that game? And I think a lot of it has to do with not just with Malkovich, but also just the general purpose of how the game was written. And yeah, it's true that Team Ninja, at least at the time, was very well known for their action game. I think nowadays it's, we have a we have a solid argument to be made for platinum games has definitely taken the trophy. So I mean, if Nintendo were to hire platinum games to to make a to make a Metroid game nowadays, we'd probably expect a lot better. Though I think right now Mercury Steam is the one that are the ones doing Metroid Dread, and they were the same team that did that did Metroid Samus Returns. Which I think it's funny that the marketing for Metroid Dread is like it's the first new Metroid game in 15 years. Like, did we forget about the 3DS entry? Or is that supposed to be like a running joke? So here's the thing, I get that Metroid Samus Returns was essentially just a remake of Metroid 2. Ah, oh, criminy. This is not working out. Also, that was a complete waste of my time.
Oh my god, are you serious? Okay, boss room, that's a good thing. There, summoning additional shields will actually be quite helpful. So I'm trying my best to make this run work as was originally intended, but I've got to say, Bubble Blast seems... I don't know, at one point, I used it while I was doing the, the, bubbles, the bubbles Challenge. Using it now? I don't know, I... Lackluster is maybe even too, too weak of a word to describe what I'm thinking about this. Like, I don't think Bubble Blast is actually doing anything. And that is an issue. So, a question was asked of me by XR Freedom, which is... Which is, you know, if I end up doing this run, does it seem like you're a little too... A little bit too focused on using homing flares. Well, so you have a bit of a biased question there in that homing flares is your signature, so of course there's going to be a little bit of extra reliance on it. But question number two, when you have when you have a dash arcana like bubble blast, it it increases the importance of all of your other arcana because bubble blast just isn't doing enough to keep it. To keep it and there's the unicorn outfit, as I as I figured I would be seeing. Now, getting back to what I was saying. So, I guess up until Samus returns. You know, Other M was the last you know, full-on Metroid game. I say full-on because there was also a Metroid Prime Federation Force, but, you know, to call that a Metroid game is... I mean, that's almost an insult to spin-offs. Any other series has had a more respectful spin-off than than Metroid Federation Force. So in my mind, Metroid Federation Force isn't a Metroid game. 
Like, I would barely even call it Metroid-ish. But now, let's get into the trailer for Metroid Dread, which... Oh my god, that looks so good. And it's gonna be on the Switch. Which, you know, now I can I can take my Metroid adventures with me, which, you know, I can already do with the likes of with the likes of Super Metroid in the original, if you you know, assuming that you're that you've subscribed to the to the Nintendo Switch online service, which yeah, I know the service isn't great, but it does have its it does have its perks, and that would definitely be amongst them. So, I mean, yeah, I've got Super Metroid kind of at the drop of a hat whenever I want it, which is nice. But, yeah, no... What was I doing? Yeah, no actual new Metroid adventure in quite a while. Which I think is a shame, because Samus is definitely one of Nintendo's, like, strongest flagship characters. It's just Team Ninja made her look like a... Well... Let, let's just call it like I see it. They, tur they turned her into just... A, essentially, just a crying girl. And don't get me wrong, there was... There is nothing outwardly, like, super wrong in the gameplay of, Met of Metroid Other M. Like, nothing glaringly wrong, anyway. A lot of the biggest problems were in the characterization of the main character. Which, when you have a character like Samus, who's... God, I hate this. Is characterized mostly through her act. I cannot talk and fight this guy at the same time. It's not at all helped by the idea that I haven't found a single decent offensive relic in the, in the entire run so far, aside from analytical monocles. Even that's just kind of, eh. It, it's like, what is it? Plus, plus eight to your critical hit chance. It's like the smallest possible DPS improvement you've ever seen. Oh, thanks, controller. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. And again, to to reiterate, I didn't. I think that there is a that there is a point to be made about Samus's characterization being just a little weak. Like this is a character that you will only really learn anything about through her actions, which again is not necessarily a bad thing, but it just means that we don't figure out much about her just in a, in a lot of other ways. Although I think after Other M, you'd be forgiven for thinking that that was the wrong way to do it. Maybe she shouldn't have had dialogue. Maybe she shouldn't have been working so hard with these other characters that, let's be fair, didn't do a damn thing to help her out. And in fact made her look even worse by, th by doing things like restricting her from using her own armor properly when it would have been great goddamn helpful. Okay, these are all complaints I've heard before. At this point, I'm just spinning my wheels. 
So, Metroid Dread, what is that? Well, I think the best way to call it is it looks like it looks like a cross between Metroid Samus Returns and Metroid Fusion. So, let's uh, let's now continue to make some Let's now continue to make some comparisons to the Alien franchise. Namely this. The original Metroid came out in... I don't know. I think it was like... I want to say it was like 86, 88, something like that. So at this point, Nintendo had a template to use for the character. She was essentially a souped-up Ellen Ripley from the movie Alien. Like, you can even tell so much when you look at the atmosphere of the places that Samus has to go. They're dark, they're lonely, they're foreboding, and, and the threats that she has to face are very otherworldly. Namely, the space pirates and other brain. So, much of her adventure is her alone. You're in an unknown space, it's damn near claustrophobic. Oh. Like the the entire atmosphere is just creepy and lonely and you are tasked to find a way to deal with all of those problems all by your lonesome. And honestly, it works out really well. But yeah, you can't tell me that Nintendo wasn't... That Nintendo wasn't at least a little bit influenced by the Alien franchise. And I put it the way that I do because the Alien franchise wasn't even a franchise at that point. I should just completely stress. The original Alien came out in gonna say that right off the bat now, especially in later chapters with enemies able to just punch right through the earthen Aegis to damage you anyway, it does kind of feel like this is hmm, a kind of substandard run. like a run where you have less control over things than you should.
Yeah, so here's a... So here's a way of looking at this run. It's like... For lack of a better term, it's like a kind of lower end, a lower end control run. And with most of the higher end enemies able to bypass the shields, it just feels like it's a run that knows what it's trying to do, but can't quite reach there. Just took a random five there. I know exactly why, too. was kind of close there for a little bit, but hey, managed to pull it off. Yeah, were it me, I would easily say that you could remove Bubble Blast, because anything that Bubble Blast does is being done by accident, and you could get a lot more work done by using Wave Front or Razor Burst. Like, there's... See, I believe Thunderline. There's all sorts of Dash Arcana that can do the same thing. Or, if you want to use Chaotic Rift, forego, forego Bubble Blast and even Earthen Aegis entirely and just run Bouncing Bubble. That will do a great job of keeping enemies off your back way better than either of those other two Arcana would. So, I wanted to talk more about Metroid Dread, but... This ended up becoming kind of a review of this run in general. So, I'm not going to say that I hated it. Again, I like being, I like working with other people's runs so I can try to get into their headspace and play around with some of the th some of the other things in the game. But there seems to be a reason why I keep coming back to like some of the same few arcana time and time again. And I think it's not necessarily because they're all better. It's because I have I have my own little like piece of the pie cut out and I know what I'm looking for. So take that how you will, that's just kind of what I'm thinking. <sighs> so hopefully this and a little bit of a you know refresher on what made Metroid Other M you know kind of I hope that was worthwhile. I like talking about games and Next time I do the next time I record a video, I'll talk about why I feel Metroid Dread is such an important title. But that's all for me right now. Thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate your support and your interest in my stuff. Um, as per usual, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about me. Maybe they want to subscribe to my channel. Um, links to my social media will be in the description below, and yeah. I also wanted to talk a little bit more about my idea for Wizard of Metal, the new kind of theme run thing I have going on, or will be having going on. 
That'll probably have to wait for another video as well, because I just got carried away. You know, it happens. It's generally... I ramble. You know this. I ramble. But that's enough from me. Thank you guys very much. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and I will be seeing you.